So I'm going to take the cards. I'm going to give them a couple of shovels and maybe a cut or two. And I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I am going to try to deal you an excellent hand. Are you familiar with the game called Texas Hold'em? Okay. Well, let me let me quiz these folks just for a second. What do these things have in common? Don't you answer because you'll probably know. American Airlines, Bullets, Maxwell Smart, Route 57, Heinz, uh, Heinz 57, Route 66. Does anybody know what those things have in common? California. Okay, well, I don't know, does Maxwell Smart? He, well, you know, at the end of the day, uh, maybe California, but, uh, but that is a good answer. Okay, so I've been stumped, all right. Uh, no, at the end of the day, those are poker slang for the kind of hand that you can have in a form of poker called Texas Hold'em. So let me kind of quiz you guys a little bit. So if I, if you had in your hand a pair of fours, does anyone know what that would be called? It's also called Magnum. So here, let's, here, let's see if we can kind of get this jump started. If you, uh, here you go. If you had a nine and a five, does anybody know what that would be? Dolly Parton. Oh, we've got some players over here. Very good. Dolly Parton. Here is one. What if you had a queen and a jack? Anyone? It's called... Oh, it is called... Very nice. It is called Oedipus. Ooh, you should be up here. That's right. That, no, that's okay. Some of you guys can Google that later. The... Um, oh, you know what? We'll go with the queen again. What about this queen and a six? Anyone? called the village people. All right, now you guys can think about that. I'm sorry, hey, it's not, I didn't make this stuff up. This is what, it, this is what they're called. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to give the cards some, uh, some, you like that one, didn't you? <laughs> I'm gonna give these cards some shuffles and some cuts, and what I'm gonna try to do is I am going to try to shuffle you an excellent hand. And uh, all right, let's give this a try. So I'm going to deal out a number of Hands give you five choices to choose from. All right, so I'm going to give you uh, anyone. You can play any one of these hands. So you can play hand number one, two, three, four, or five. It's Martin. Martin, which one, which hand would you like to play? You want to play hand number three? All right, I'll take care of these. Go ahead and turn those two cards over for me. Go ahead, show them what you got. All right, queen five. Now, if I deal you two queens and a five, that would give you a full house. That would give you an excellent hand, wouldn't it? You'd be very pleased with a hand like that if somebody dealt you a hand like that, yes? Yeah. All right, so let's see what we can do. So the first card you deal to the table does not count, and then you deal three to the center. And there are, oh, two kings. That's okay. No, that's not bad. Two kings and a queen. Uh, all right, well, let's keep going. Maybe I can something, give you something to develop. <sighs> okay, that's not, uh, that's not a queen. Oh, hold on. No, that's a good point. You have four clubs. Very good. So if I deal you one more club, that would give you a flush. Actually, you know what? There's a ten, there's a jack, there's a queen, there's a king. Uh, if I deal you a nine or an ace, you would have a straight, which you actually want the flush because the flush is better than the straight. Hold on a second, though. But hold on. I don't know if you're seeing this, but there's a ten of clubs, jack of clubs, queen of clubs, king of clubs. If I deal you a nine of clubs, that'd give you a straight flush. If I deal you an ace of clubs, that would give you a royal flush. That would be good. So you deal one to the table, you burn one. What's the card we're looking for? The Ace of Clubs. Uh, which begs the question, how is something like that possible? Because I know that some of the people are, you know, you see this type of thing and you say, okay, how is this possible? And I'll be honest with you, it's, um, it's, actually, it's actually pretty straightforward. It's called cheating. Um, <laughs> And uh, so I'm going to show you how to cheat. I'm not showing you how to cheat, but I'm going to show you how technically you can cheat. Uh, I'm going to show you some different techniques. Now, there's different ways that somebody could cheat. You could, for instance, the Lollapalooza story. That's just a scam. Uh, you could cheat by shuffling. If let's just say you were playing cards with someone who was shuffling, were shuffling the cards and flashing the bottom card of the deck to the person across the table. See how I'm shuffling the cards so that you can see the bottom card? Sometimes people don't shuffle the cards flat on the table. If you saw that, if you were a card across from the table, what would you do? Would you tell them, hey, shuffle the cards on the table? Or would you just take that little piece of knowledge 
and use it to your advantage, because that's what I call advantage play. And there are also other techniques and tricks that you can use to cheat. So right now we're going to, um, I'm gonna show you something, because some of the different techniques are base dealing, peeking the bubble, the Greek deal. I'm gonna show you something known as dealing seconds. So we're gonna use the ace, and we're just gonna deal some cards. So what happens is I just kinda deal some cards, and then I deal myself the ace. Okay, now hold on a second. Let me show you how that works. It's kind of uh, hard to follow, perhaps. And I'll just leave the ace face up so you can see it. So all I do is I deal cards to them, and I deal myself the ace again. Yeah, thank you. So what is happening here? What's happening is it's called dealing seconds because I'm dealing the second card from the t uh, I'm dealing the second card from the top. So if the ace is on top, I'm pushing over more than one card, and I'm dealing the second one to the table to the person across from me so that I can keep the ace for the person I want to win. So you can use that technique. Now, a slightly more sophisticated technique would be to do what is known as dealing seconds and thirds. So you would actually have the two cards that you want in your hand, and then you would push off two. You would deal a third card. You would deal as many as you wanted, and then you could deal the... Uh, you could do a combination of dealing seconds and thirds to give yourself the two cards that you want. So that's a little bit uh, confusing sort of to, uh, to try to explain. So let me just kind of show you what I'm talking about. We use the ace and the king. So uh, it might look something like this. Like that. So, of course, if you're actually playing with uh, a number of other people you, and you're not playing heads up, it would be a little bit more difficult. Uh, because you have to do a combination of dealing seconds and thirds to, uh, to a number of people. So let's see, this may be a little tricky, but let me see if I can do this. So I'll deal one here, here we'll play four-handed, five-handed, just like so, and ace-king to me. So that is cheating. <laughs> so so uh, who wants to play cards later? Uh, 